Hi, everybody, and welcome to the John Meyer Podcast. Today, we're actually talking about going open source. And joining us is a returning guest on the show, Amit, the CEO of OpenOps. Amit, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me, John. It's really exciting. Uh, It was a great conversation last time. Amit, you have a huge announcement for everybody, and that's really what this podcast and show is all about. But before we get to announcement, now, now, everybody, hang on a second. We're going to get there. Amit, can you tell everybody what is OpenOps? Yes, of course, John. And before we say what it is, because we're a lot of times uh, you see in our marketing FinOps and the the, uh, keyword FinOps popping up, it's really important to say what we are not. We are not a FinOps visibility platform. We are not a mega bill to show you your bills and all the different uh, types of platforms you have. There are plenty of competitors in this space, and this is not a gap that we wanted to try and solve because we saw um that there are wonderful companies doing uh, great work there already the gap that we did see that and that we are solving is what happens uh in the interim between knowing the problems you have and actually building the operations in order to resolve them so uh, if you look at the typical enterprise uh, with uh, complex environments and large uh, cloud accounts they might have hundreds of thousands of issues to solve, issues like unattached volumes, machines to right size, databases that no one is connecting to, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when you think about how to take the visibility you have to, to having all these issues and moving it to actual operations to resolve them and to fix them, that's actually a huge challenge. And for that, you need automation. And essentially, Automation in boxed products today, we noticed it never works because enterprises are very fragmented. They need a lot of integrations. Each of them have their own permutation of ticketing systems and communication systems and cloud systems and telemetry systems, etc. cetera. Um, and it's really hard for a box product to come in and integrate with all of that. And then if you add the complexity in uh, every enterprise having their own processes and uh, uh, w- wanting to run things differently. Just as an example, one might want to automatically remediate issues in development environment. The other might want three levels of approvals and exemptions, etc. on top of it. That variety becomes very, very hard to uh, uh, deliver a solution to. And that's why we focused on automations. And specifically, that's why a no-code platform with all the integrations baked in with industry best practices as served as playbooks that you can customize together with the analytics and data platform, this robust solution can help solve this problem uh, by connecting to all the enterprise environment and keeping flexibility to tailor automations to what you need. And that's that's the key uh, differentiation of our platform. Hamid, I like how you started off saying what you aren't. This is what <laughs> we are. We are clearly defining what we're not. And we're talking about actually like going open source and we're talking no code automation. First, what is open source for the community? Yes, so open source is an amazing way to create collaboration, right? Because we don't want to gate um, the ability to build automations. We want to build a huge community around uh, uh, building automations because we believe that's the way to go. We believe essentially, and and I would say that's a difference with a lot of vendors as well in that space. A lot of vendors try to be the best in breed and they set how the product this should look like. And while we're doing that, of course, we did a huge market research to understand what are the best automations to build, what are the best practices across the industry. I think we've interviewed more than 300 FinOps practitioners in order to curate our best practices. But essentially, long term, we believe that the community can solve this problem even better. Like if you think of tens of thousands of FinOps practitioners across the globe with access to real environments, real world use cases, trying this out, discussing between themselves what can be done to solve things better, to automate, etc. We believe that long term, this will be the better way to solve this hard problem of uh, enabling automation and enterprises and, and complex organizations in general. 
Amit, you keep saying we 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 believe this, and I I think we we just got to get to the announcement here because this <laughs> is actually really huge. I'm super excited that you're going to announce it here on the show. What do you want to tell everybody? Yeah. So starting today, essentially, um, OpenOps is going to be available in GitHub as complete open source with an Apache license, uh, which for those of you who don't know, it's a very permissive license, which enables essentially anyone to be using uh, our code and running it. And well, that's a very exciting and huge step for us, uh, at least. Amit, this is a huge announcement, not only for you, for OpenOps, but the community of actually OpenOps going open source. I think the biggest question that I have is why would a company take their product and go open source? Yep. So essentially, we are um, we have a few answers to this question. One is about trust. Uh, in order to uh, really build great relationships with customers, we uh, uh, need to earn their trust. And there is no better way of doing it than uh, giving a lot of value uh, uh, before you advance and go to your next move uh, to the community. And uh, essentially, that's one answer. But the other answer is actually we, we, we just have big ambitions here. Uh, if you look at other successful open source moves, like uh, what uh, HashiCorp did with Terraform, um they set a new industry standard they and this enables a lot for the community this enabled a lot for HashiCorp as well um what it enables for the community is uh, the ability to um actually build skills based on the open source and then apply them to every company they are moving to it enables collaboration it enables sharing best practices with each other um you know, uh, we can think about uh, uh, even analogies like what USPC did to the world, and which enabled you know charging your phone whenever you are, right? Wherever you are, I can use your charger, you can use my charger. It's the kind of standardization that enables collaboration, uh, and open source can really achieve that. Open source can be really a driver for that, and enable both the community to achieve more and enable us to uh, uh, build more advanced features on top of that as well. You talked about obviously trust, and that was the first thing that you keyed on. Then after that is building a standard within the community. Now I know what open source, the benefits of it are, you know, your public code, right? Your code, you're already announced that it's, it's out there. It's available for people to use free usage. Uh, you have the modification rights and you're able to redistribute it to everybody. But the other thing is that you really hit on this community and building trust. What is the benefits of having a larger community work on these problems, though? That's absolutely amazing, having a community work on these problems together. Because if you think of the number of uh, workflows that you could curate as a vendor and uh, versus the number of automations that the community can create, obviously, the community has way wider access uh, to different types of environments, different types of data, um, different types of organizational needs and constraints. And together as a community, I really believe that we can build uh, much more robust automations. Uh, and, and granted, like this is a really hard problem. Automating things within the enterprise is a hard problem. I, I sometimes give full talks disregarding our product completely just on this subject. How can you implement automation in an enterprise? Uh, and so the community can be a huge driver for that. And standards can be a huge driver for that as well. And I think it's much more powerful than a single vendor trying to produce the best automations in the world, which definitely will contribute to our part. <laughs> and uh, we will publish best practices and we will donate a lot of content to the community etc um, but i think over time the community will uh, beat any vendor uh, and open source is a way to enable that 
I agree that uh, the community will be any vendor because here's what you have. A, a vendor has limited resources, a limited engagement. By allowing the community access to it, you are pulling in everybody and multiple minds and in innovation, ways to modify and enhance it and provide back to it and also a huge collaboration. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, there's no imagining what uh, can people do together, what can they achieve together. And, you know, I love uh, to see it in every realm where you can create, whether it's uh, collaboration or even sometimes competitiveness, like who can build the best workflow or who can uh, uh, optimize the bills on this environment the best. Like that's, that's a huge driver for people. Uh, and, and people like to be able to contribute and to be a part of the community. I believe people want to engage, want to share their knowledge, want to show their expertise. So, um, there are many drivers on why that could, uh, play like that could succeed greatly. Amit, what is the long-term goal of putting open ops, open source, building a community, having events, engagement, Slack channels, anything that you can provide that people can look towards the future of open ops and open source? Yes, of course. So I really, really hope um, that people will find our platform useful. Um, and we'll find open source extremely useful for their specific use cases. That's actually the first thing. That's that's the most important thing, right? We want to bring something to the world which people will uh, benefit from. We'll build automations that benefit themselves, benefit their organization, uh, help the world advance forward. Um, in the end, every company beyond the need to uh, commercialize, etc., needs to have a grander vision that they are promoting. And this is our vision to completely democratize uh, building automations and to um, essentially make it accessible for uh, anyone. Um, and um, around, uh, so we will be launching uh, the open source right now as a beta. And it's framed as a beta because we want the community to come in and help us mature it. Um, everything that the community will contribute, of course, will remain free and open source and under the Apache license. And on top of that, of course, we will have some uh, paid features that we will be releasing in the future as well, namely around three areas. Well, one of them is uh, anything required for uh, enterprise uh, great security requirements. So ability to fine grain permissions and uh, uh, really tailor uh, things into the security model in different enterprises. This is, of course, something that is very hefty to build, very complex, and therefore we will need to charge for that. Um, another uh, set of uh, paid features that we will offer uh, will also include uh, what it takes to collaborate at large scale uh, in an enterprise. So for example, if you need to connect a thousand AWS accounts in bulk, that's where we're going from the individual user that can benefit from this to, to an enterprise. And, uh, that's another area in which we will offer paid, uh, products. Um, and of course the largest and most interesting today is AI. We can't uh, have a discussion today without speaking about AI, right? <laughs> so. I was wondering uh, I when that would make it into the conversation. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Um, and I think like our vision for AI is really exciting as well, because we, I think the core word that we keep coming back to here is trust. And if you think about what it takes for companies to be able to um, run AI um, and agents internally, you realize that it's very unlikely that, for example, let's take a financial institution like a, a bank, a big bank in North America. With all the regulation they have in place and uh, that they need to comply with, I don't see them, you know, letting agents roam free and change all their cloud environments uh, without any control and without any ability to explain the reasoning behind it. Um, so we will need a new interface to collaborate with AI. And that interface, in my thesis at least, needs to be more abstracted. 
So no code is a very good fit and no code, which is open source, which has already trust with the enterprise is a great gateway to do that. So we will release um, AI co-pilots to help uh, people run uh, automations and build automations. But in the future, we will also be uh, um, looking into uh, agents as a way uh, to create that trust with enterprises, keeping the human in the loop, having the agent explain the automation they built in a, a more abstracted way. So, uh, you know, because honestly, I don't know if uh, you've ever done a code review, but no one wants to review and do a code review with 4,000 lines of code that with the uh, um, uh, logic that uh, was curated by, uh, uh, I would call it alien intelligence, right? Because it's not human intelligence. Um, so we think of no code as a great way to collaborate with AI and um, specifically in the context of enterprises, uh, open sourcing it, etc. It's also a way uh, to create trust and to build that trust, not only between our company and, and enterprise, but also between uh, AI and enterprises. Uh, so that's kind of our perspective and, and where we're going with this for the future. And that you're talking about reviewing code for alien intelligence. Talk about just human <laughs> intelligence. I, a thousand lines, something you wrote, you know, a couple weeks ago or even six months ago is very difficult if it's not documented and you can't get it into the mindset of the person who wrote it. I mean, this is a huge announcement for everybody. Open ops when open source. There's a lot happening and a lot going on. There's a lot more information. I mean, before I wrap things up, I got one final question for you. Why does it make sense to actually have a dedicated FinOps automation platform to begin with? Uh, that's a um, wonderful question. Um, I think in the end, we there's a first, we're very limited in what we can do without automation. Of course, we can run around chasing people, notifying people, uh, opening uh, manual JIRA tickets and having reviews over lists of thousands of issues with engineering managers, etc. But no one wants to do that. And therefore, uh, not only does it not scale, it doesn't happen. Like people, uh, People are doing this, of course, but at some level of complexity, you can only touch the tip of the iceberg with that. And it's really, really hard to actually move the needle. So if we really want to drive change, if we really want to um, make an impact, especially at complex organizations, we need automation that we don't have any other choice. Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us on this show, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, John. Pleasure to be here again. I'm, I'm sure I'll come by for more episodes in the future. <laughs> oh, man, we're definitely looking forward to it. Everybody, we're actually talking with Amit, who is the CEO of OpenOps, on the huge announcement of OpenOps going open source. You got to check it out. All right, everybody, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify, because guess what? We're out of here.